According to a study by Blue Cross Blue Shield conducted from 2013 to 2016, there has been a 33% increase in diagnoses. The report estimates more than 9 million insured Americans suffer from depression. Depression is now being called the second most impactful medical condition in the United States after high blood pressure. Depression is so endemic in America right now and it's become a silent killer. The number one cause of suicide in America right now is depression and suicide rates are climbing high. In 2017, there were 17,284 reported homicides and non-negligent manslaughter cases in the US. But in the same year, there were 47,173 suicides. That's more than double. These numbers tell us that over 129 people in the US a day are dying from depression. And suicide is the second most common cause of death among 15 to 34 year olds. In fact, a new study Todd has found that the number of children and teens admitted to children's hospitals for thoughts of suicide and self-harm have more than doubled during the last decade. Shocking statistics about kids and suicide to report tonight. A Vanderbilt study shows the number of hospitalized kids who had attempted suicide or had suicidal thoughts more than doubled since 2008. So, Todd, we've seen the context, the numbers, they're rising. Um, why is depression so endemic in America? Well, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is oppression. Um, I was just reading in the Psalms as part of my daily reading, yeah. and David is oppressed by Saul, his, his enemy who is after him. And he, he falls into a place of depression. And some of the Psalms, almost all of them, were written out of this, this place of David in his own quest for getting freedom uh, from what's going on. So he's talking to the right. Lord. The Psalms are much of his prayer to God. And, and I just wonder, is there some feeling of oppression that comes from different angles that people are struggling with um, and don't know how to, to find an escape? The number one point that I want to address is, so what is going wrong? Um, firstly, healthcare professionals admit they are not exactly sure of why depression rates are rising. And some are arguing that depression is not being effectively diagnosed and treated. Um, we're not really sure why this is happening, but what's also really striking is that the treatment for depression has not gone up in that time. So, so there's more depression in our population, but we're not treating it adequately. Some healthcare professionals are even suggesting that all adolescents should be screened for depression. But I mean, how practical is that, Todd? And also, doesn't that deal with the fact that many people, particularly teens, don't want to talk about depression because it's such a stigma? Mm. Stigma still is a very big issue. Uh, it manifests itself in the ways that we think and talk about the, the mentally ill and in the, the terms, the words that we use to describe them. For instance? Wacko, psycho, cray cray. Now on the other hand, even though a record number of people are being treated for depression, it's still on the rise. And according to the National Center for Health Statistics, the use of antidepressants in the US over the last 15 years, and wait for it Todd, it soared by 65%. So antidepressants are clearly, they're not a long-term solution. As we are now seeing, psychiatrists are even admitting that antidepressants are not a long-term fix and even accusing big pharma of capitalizing on people's pain to sell more drugs. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan and I'd like to spend a few minutes speaking to you about my perspectives on psychiatric medications, which I began to investigate based on my perceptions of the severe limitations of this treatment model. You know, the medicine fixes the issue once or twice or three times and then all of a sudden on the fourth time or the fifth time the medicine doesn't work anymore. And we have created an opportunity for pharmaceutical companies to infect a vulnerable host. And what I mean by that is that we have patients who are suffering, they're looking for answers and they're looking for a cure. And the issue just gets worse because you know, they never address the problems in the first place, and so they just get put on more medicine until they're not, no longer themselves. And 
there has never been a study that has demonstrated that medication treatment long-term provides better outcomes. There are no lifetime studies. I mean, one of the more recent approvals in the FDA of a stimulant for so-called ADHD was three weeks long. So then you're going to say, give it, give it for months or years or a lifetime? And why are the studies only three months long? Because the drugs don't work. They're all neurotoxins, so after a few weeks, the patients get worse. So you can't carry the studies beyond a few weeks. This is such a giant fraud. So, Todd, on that point about Big Pharma sort of exploiting vulnerable people and, and their pain to sell more drugs, um, what does the Bible say about this kind of um, human behavior? Well, I think we're wired uh, to put our hope in something. We are wired to put hope in that which is larger than us and, and bigger than us. And I think that ultimately is intended to be God. And yet we've been taught to hope in government. We've been taught to hope in our jobs. We've been taught to hope in money or in sex. And we have more money than we've ever had. We have more sex than we've ever had. Government is bigger than ever. And none of it is satisfying us. And yeah. so we have learned that those, those things are futile in support applying this inner sense of, of stability yeah. and goodness. And so that makes sense. we're failing to have the hope in the things that we were told would be hope filling to us. And so we're empty. I think that might be an, a reason why we're seeing such an increase. Uh, that's right. And uh, one Christian philosopher, I think it was Augustine said, there is a God shaped void in every human heart that only God can fill. Mm -hmm. So for those experiencing depression, uh, but perhaps don't know what it is. Um, I want to give some points about how you can spot depression. Now, firstly, depression is a serious illness that affects many people. Symptoms vary, but sufferers typically show the following signs. You can constantly feel down and tired. This is about being in bed for days. And if that's you, that's a sure sign. Uh, your self-esteem hits rock bottom, you lose interest in activities you normally enjoy, and you're plagued with feelings of sadness, guilt, and worthlessness, even with thoughts of self-harm and suicide. Number three, you have concentration and memory problems. You've got problems remembering details, names, making decisions, and you find it a struggle to listen to what people are actually saying. Number four, you have trouble sleeping. You feel restless and experience abnormal sleep patterns. Now, these can be extreme and range from just a few hours a day to the opposite, where you sleep up to 10, 12, or even 15 hours a day. Uh, number five, your weight changes. All of a sudden you gain several pounds or your weight drops drastically. Just like your emotional state, your eating habits are also unstable. Number six, nothing brings you pleasure. Your favorite food goes back to what you were saying about putting our hope and our enjoyment in other things. They don't seem to satisfy anymore and you feel constantly bored and tired. Number seven, you experience mood swings. You constantly feel anxious, irritated, short-tempered. Everyone seems to annoy you. Your mood can swing from a puddle of tears to a fit of rage in the blink of an eye. Your health deteriorates. Depressed people commonly feel aches and pains and digestive problems. And these don't typically go away with medication because your mental state is involved. So why are people increasingly depressed, especially among teenagers? Whilst causes of depression include academic stress, social anxiety, peer pressure, financial strains, divorce and genetic disorders, one could argue that these have always been around and therefore do not explain the sudden increase in depression over the last 10 years. Now, since clinicians cannot give us any concrete answers, I think we should consider what the Bible says. So what's the biblical perspective on this issue, Todd? Well, it's, it's a very complicated issue, but I think there's probably many things that are, are flowing into uh, the sudden increase. And one mm -hmm. thing that makes me wonder is the uh, freedom with which we share uh, digitally. Uh, we often share our opinions. People are right. very critical. Social media has given a wide latitude for people's thoughts that were once 
kept quiet. Now we broadcast them in mm-hmm. 143 characters in just a yeah. second. Um, so peer pressure comes through those kind of channels. Teens are faced with increasing expectations of perfectionism, both physically, academically, emotionally. Right. And so these, all of these factors, I think, come to play with our need to be connected, right? The Bible has told us that we were created to be connected to God. And all of these things simply magnify that disconnected state. So I think what we're sensing more acutely is our disconnected nature from God. We're, Mm -hmm. We're cut off from Him. So as sin abounds, so does that sense of alienation, both from one another uh, as also from God. And so think, I think that has something to do with this, this deep sense of angst that teens and many people struggle with is we're, things are not the way they ought to be. And we're feeling it more acutely as a community. We're separated from God and we need right. to have that, right. that fixed. Yeah. This leads us to our third and final question. What can you do? if you're experiencing depression. Well, here's a quick message for you. I want you to know that no matter where you are in life, no matter how low you have sunk, no matter how bleak your situation, this is not the end. This is not the end of your story. This is not the final chapter of your life. On that point, Todd, how would you respond to somebody who's experiencing depression right now watching this program? I would say you're not alone. There are many people who experience depression. And throughout Scripture, we find many of the biblical heroes who also struggled with with depression. Um, David, for example, King David, the greatest king of Israel. All of the, the book of Psalms is filled with moments of his depression, which he works through. I would say read the Psalms as one thing. And Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, yeah. struggled with depression. Elijah, one of the greatest prophets, he too, after a, a period of great victory, also struggled with depression so much so that he wanted to die. I mean, he said, Lord, just take my life. Job, we all know about Job and all of the difficulty and the trial that he went through. He too was so depressed. He said, just in my life, it would have been better if I was never born. Right. So the first thing to know is you're not alone. Yeah. We all struggle with depression at various points in our lives. But the key to turning that all around, I think, is getting involved into a community having relationships of people around us who can support us, but ultimately it's putting your hope in the Lord. So hope in God. The the psalmist asks himself in Psalm 42 and 43, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope in God. That is the only place I can point to is through Christ to say that He knows the needs of our hearts. Psalm 56, God puts the tears, every tear of ours in a bottle He knows our tossings when we're sleepless at night, that sleeplessness that just won't go away. He knows the agony of our souls. And so I would say hope in God, involve yourself in a Christian community and walk with those who can help you to get out of it and point you to Christ because he too has walked through the despair of this world. And I just want to leave you with something Jesus himself said. This is an invitation to you. He says, come to me all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoyed what you heard, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. So until the next time on The Big Deal from Todd and me, make a big deal about Jesus.